I'm back. Oh, that's a great song for today, for those who's paying attention. For those who are paying attention. I haven't streamed in a week. Hey, Fazgar, what's going on? Hands, diamond hands. Wall Street bets, trimming the hedge, playing the game, but now we ahead. They get mad, going in debt. We getting rich, Wall Street is dead. I don't got paper hands, sticking it to the man. I don't got paper hands, hold the line and stand. Diamond hands, diamond hands. I'm excited too, man. I'm yelling my mic today. I'm going to yell at my mic today. What's going on, everybody? As you know, the old episodes would say, what is up, what is good, and what is going on? I am good. I'm chilling. I am chilling. You know, it's funny. I like a lot of subtlety. I like a lot of subtlety. That's what I like in this world. I like subtle things. I like uh, things that are not like, you know, I like that there's, believe it or not, I like to leave little, um, uh, Easter eggs in like the stream, you know what I mean? Like, there's always little different things in the layout, you, you know, something like that. I always move something here or there, you know. The uh, opening theme song to this is by this guy, Nikki Gritz, Gritties, and I'm waiting for him to hit me up. Be like, hey, here's my song. I'm like, here you go, here, here you go. You know, I messaged him, didn't say anything. It's not copyrighted, he didn't copyright the music, so it's fair game. I'd be happy to give something if uh, requested. I've tried. But. 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 The uh, GME AMC squeeze is on. All that stuff back from January. You know, they only talk about the stuff in, like, the mainstream. But that's on, man. That That's happening. I have a little position. Uh, just just a little bit. No, no, nothing, nothing crazy. You know, like, I would have talked about it way more and... That's not really my type of thing. Yeah, nah, AMC's up to like 20 bucks. I'm in on it at like five. But it's one of those things where it's like, it's really, sh like, I don't like talking about it too much because I, like, it's just nonstop hype. You go on and it's like, AMC, we're on the moon, the moon, the moon. It's like, oh my God. 140, 480. Here, hold on. See the little guy right there? See a little, see a little, uh, stonks guy? Right back down there. We got a 3090 coming in soon, too. We're set up, we're ready to go. We're rocking and rolling. We are rocking and we are rolling. What's going on, Kara? What's going on? You're bad. Yo, I want to, like, yell at something. I want to, like, just, like, yell at my microphone. So, like, I want to, like, pull out two Magic Gathering cards. Let me pull it out of my cube. Let me know how that Chia farm's going for you, man. Let me know how that Chia farm is going for you. Uh, it seems cool. It's one of those things, though, where I hear too many people that are like, yo, I bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, no, let me go to a different card. Like, uh, they, they, they go, I bought all of these, like, things. There we go. There's one card. Like, all these, like, hard drives, but I haven't got any money yet. It's like, I, I'm not, like, in love with that idea. You know, but like, I spent so much. Here, let's, uh, let's pull two different, let's pull two of these things. Three. Perfect. I got two cards that I want to show for, um, simplicity and, like, just for the sake of the conversation. Because there's something that Wizards of the Coast has done that has pissed me off. Like, actually, like, annoyed me. But, did it surprise me? No. No, it didn't. It didn't. So, here's two Magic the Gathering cards right here. Right? Now they're blurry. Let's zoom on in. So, on your left, we have the Judge promo for a Deranged Hermit. 
Deranged Hermit is, of course, on the reserve list, originally from Urza's Legacy. And they did, before they closed the loophole, this card in 2004 was printed. Before they closed the loophole, because they had printed some cards in foil for judges that were reserve list cards. They were very special things that were on the reserve list. As of 2010, you no longer can reprint those cards either. Just for another simplicity, here's just another reserve list card. A like recurring nightmare, right? Just two cards. Here we go. Basically, legally, and by all reasonable accounts, they cannot reprint these cards again. They're on the reserve list. There are about eight, like, like 400 something cards in Magic that cannot be reprinted as part of the reserve list. Now, people who are anti reserve list and i i get it you know i get it i think you could be you're instead of trying to play mental hoops about why they can get rid of the reserve list i would say you should probably just you know buy the reserve list cards with your time and then just hold them just don't you never get rid of these these cards will never be sold by me ever ever this recurring nightmare i bought it in this condition for my cube intentionally this deranged tournament they will never be sold but there is a group of cards i'm just gonna pull some more i'm, not, I'm just gonna start I'm just gonna start putting them on the on this on the table, right, as we go along. Right, I'm just gonna start putting these cards. Okay, and I'm gonna have a point to it. I'm gonna have a point to it, right? There is a point, guys. There is a point. Just wanna get like a few just to really make a point. I don't think any of these cards are a real flex, right? So let's talk about this pile of cards I put here. They're part of a different group of cards that are known to some that people like to claim is the pseudo reserve list. The pseudo reserved list right so here's our reserve list cards and here are a bunch of cards that are blinged out they're all pretty they're all nice looking for their own different reasons and people want to call it the re pseudo reserve list and their reasoning is while well, the card is so special that wizards of the coast would never reprint it and I pulled out this Phyrexian Vorinclex intentional. This is the chase card by far for call time, right? The Phyrexian Vorinclex. Nothing else in that set is worth over $50 in the collector's packs. The Vorinclex is miles ahead of everything else. Miles ahead of everything else, right? They just announced in a secret lair that they are putting in that secret lair the Phyrexian Elish Norn. Let me pull up the Phyrexian Elish Norn. Let me get this up, right? Hope everyone's having a great week. Hope everything's going well. I just want to bring this up from a financial cardboard point of view, right? So let's uh, go here in and out of... I'm going to bring up my old uh, pack numbers here, right? Let's just look at this from a point of view. And here we go, right? So let's just take a look at this, right? Got to place every oil seal in my car. Cars are expensive, man. That's why I tell people don't, unless you had a lot, a lot of money, don't spend too much money on your cars, folks. They are, uh, they, they are really money pets. Although, apparently, right now, they're all, you know, cars are through the roof. But just, you know, get cars that are easy to fix, cheap to fix. Because when I had an expensive... So, let's take a look at this card. Well, let's take a look at this shit right here. Right? Judge Promo Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Right? right? Let's, uh, for a second, go back to here. So, I could just pull up this here. Right where? <laughs> So this 
is in the secret lair Phyrexian Praetors, right? As you can see here. Secret Lair Praetors. Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger, Urbras the Hidden, Shouldered Whispering One, Jingitaxius Korwalger, and Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Going to be in a secret lair, right? Pretty much confirmed. And this poses a huge hole to the idea of the pseudo reserve list. So I have been told in the past by people that, you know, listen, Wizards of the Coast, they're not like you don't only have to buy reserve list cards. You could buy expeditions. You can buy mythic editions. You can buy box toppers. You could buy full art extendants. You can buy op you can buy invocations because Wizards of the Coast won't reprint those. Some people, I know this might sound crazy, but some people actually, when they buy things in trading cards, like to know that they hold their value. I know this might sound fucking insane. Like, what do you mean? You want my cards to like hold the value? Some people don't want to know that when they saved up money, and for some people, this might be uh, two months of saving up money, right? This might be two, and this was $500 before this thing got announced, right? You know, so these have came down drastically recently. This might be two months of saving $40 a month. You know, you're working because you really want that cool looking Elish Norm. What's going on, Hermit? Grand Cenobite. You might really want to have this really nice looking Elish Norn Grand Cenobite for your deck. And, you know, your life situation isn't the worst. You know, like if you could afford th this, you know, your life situation isn't really crazy. Yeah, no, I heard Michael's doing Welcome to Wraith. I'm actually going to buy my first Flesh and Blood card. I've decided I'm going to do it at Gen Con. I want to record myself buying a Flesh and Blood card. I really want to buy an Eclipse. That's the card I want. But let me get back to this point, right? Say that, you know, you're in college or whatever, and you just really love your uh, Chulain Teller of Tales deck, right? Just, just throwing names out there, right? Just throwing names out there. You really love your Chulain Teller of Tales deck, or your Iona, not Iona, your Avacyn deck, and you want to have this nice Elish Norn, and you save for two months. And then Wizards of the Coast just goes, oh, actually, I know you saved up and paid $400 for this card, right? $350, not $60, plus tax, plus shipping, you know, assuming that you bought it from a reputable seller. Yeah, I know the person who has the Lily Pay. Well, that's, a, that's a reputable Elish Norn. It's a real Elish Norn. It's good. You saved up for months and months. And now, Wizards of the Coast goes, actually, spend $35 and you get all five Phyrexian Praetors. You know those guys? You, know, you might have spent $80 on a Foil of Art and Clex, Voice of Hunger. I think that's how much that card's worth, right? Whatever. I'm not going to not gonna check. I don't really care. I don't really give half a shit. But I can understand. I can understand if you uh, want Elish Norn, a regular copy, to be inexpensive, right? I can understand that. You know, you just want to be like, listen, I just want to play. That's all I want to do. I just want to fucking play. All I want to do is play the game. These freaking people, you asshole. I just want to play with my new squirrel cards. I just want to play with Deranged Hermit. Why is this shit regular $100? This is some bullshit. You know what I mean? I just started playing. I could sympathize with you. The reserve list isn't going anywhere. Don't worry. Oh, has the new M15. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. It's the same looking thing. Yeah, I know. I've, I've heard the argument. It's a terrible argument. And I know you're being sarcastic, Vazga. But I'm saying I can at least sympathize with that point. You know, like, I don't think the reserve list should go anywhere because I do think the people who back in, in the 90s who uh, stuck with it and held on to the card should be rewarded for that because... We forget, I have a thousand answers to why. Never mind. First of all, I, I did some quick math earlier because, you know, I'm looking at like stocks and cryptos and all that stuff. And a big thing in that is market cap. That doesn't exist in magic. We don't see the market cap, but we know the print runs of some stuff. Like we know there were like 300,000 or so revised rares, you know, 
even if you assume 20% burn rate on cards lost, fires, water, the market cap on just dual lands, just revised dual lands, is eight to nine figures. So if you think that they're going anywhere at this point, this is so far. Oh, I because they're really, really scarce. That's all. They're like people like, there are people who collect the list, the list, right? So the question is, hey, quick question, why the fuck is the cryptic command in the true lane from the list in the thousands? Because like the uh, the one thing I'll say about the list, I don't like the list. I, I genuinely don't like the what they do with the list because they reprinted in the list like the Elvish Champion Champs art. Which is part of what I'm getting to here, right? But they're just very scarce. You know what I mean? So like in the they're they're really like they're just so if you want the list one, and there are there are some people who collect everything, you know. If you want to collect the whole list for a set, you need each one of those cards. Eh, they're not really they're not really available. Also, I think that's the no, it's not the is that the only way to get a non-foil true lane? I know it came in the uh this the the the, the brawl deck. Remember Brawl? But I know it came in the Brawl deck. But I think that's the only way to get it non-foil, unless it came non-foil in the uh, collector's packs, which it might have for Throne. I haven't opened that many Throne collector's packs. But getting to the point of that, right, is that you save up. You So if people want Elish Norn for their decks, he was not foil. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I had seen one. I think I remember because of Corvold, because Corvold was really good in that standard time. But... If you want an Elish Norn for your deck and they want to reprint it, that's fine. These cards are not on the reserve list. I think they over reprint, but that's neither here nor there. You know the risk. At least they're upfront about it. That if the card is not on the reserve list, the random reprint mortars are taking aim at all times. And they are bang, 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 bang. Fucking 35 printings of Cryptic Command in 15 minutes, right? So you know, but you know if you buy a card for if you spend $70 on grief and I'm going to talk about my horizon I really want to talk about my horizon today. so I do my Pokemon heads right but I want to talk about my horizons too I, I think my horizons 2 is going to be a great set um and I think it's going to sell very very well right but you know you know if you want to pay $70 for grief right $90 for grief you know that there's a chance that they could do a more print run you know they could ban the card you because they could ban reserve those cards too but come on you know like, like at that point like when they change like they when they i remember when they changed the mulligan rule everyone thought bizarre baghdad was gonna jump the price like went down for a couple like a couple dollars because more some guy liquidated like 10. yeah noted list version truly is still under four dollars it's only three copies yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It, it the 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 market data on cards at a very low supply is very weird. You know what I mean? There's just not many copies of these cards around. Like, I know you have the list, um, what do you have, the Enlightened Tutor? That's probably going to hold some serious value because it's got that old art and frame and it's got the list symbol. So that's probably pretty good, you know. But if you want the card to play with, you know the risks buying them financially. And honestly, you just want to play. So it's like, whatever. You're like, okay, it's $15, $20. Who cares? Why the fuck do they need to reprint the fucking Phyrexian one? Why? Like, what's the point? But the point is more what I'm saying. They're going to. Hey, insane. Coming in with a resubscription. Five months. God damn. Five months. Yo, it's been a year, folks. It's been a year. I see discrepancies a lot on the CE and the ICE. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, insane. But my point that I want to get to than just make it is that please do not be fooled at all none 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 of these cards here are ever going to be on my discord in the investment channel could be a flex could be a flex for sure but i will never tell anybody go out and buy all the copies of Phyrexian Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. I will never tell you to go buy up. And you know what? This 
card and this this frame here has outperformed some of their cards right like some reserveless cards for sure right like the masterpiece soul ring has easily outperformed recurring nightmare even on like a percentage base okay you know what i mean easily but but to think that they cannot do another run of those masterpieces because they feel like it or make it like a specialty promo or do like a secret lair through the years and they just put the soul ring in a thing you're out of your mind i'm telling you right now you're out of your mind so if you want those cards to have go for it go for it if you want them to have it by all means go for it but if you're buying something because you expect it to also appreciate in value over time you'd be better off buying options like i'm not even kidding you you'd be better off buying calls and puts and margin and taking out margin than buying these random cards buy them because you like them that's it i do not have i have this card because i think it's awesome and it's in the cube i think it looks cool but it's not this card they are two different animals this card here i expect in five years to be worth 20 percent more than it is today i expect this in 10 years to be double what it is today i expect this to be the exact same thing you know it doesn't have those yeah but right but I'm saying it's not even that, right, Hermit? What I was saying before is, but let's look at the uh, let's look at the other end of it, right? Let's just look at the other end. What I'm saying is this: say you work a job making your average salary, but a little above. Your bills are paid, and you get to allocate a hundred and fifty dollars a month into magic. Do you think that's like reasonable? One hundred fifty dollars into your hobby, you know, and you love Elish Norn. You play your commander deck, you play your Chulain commander deck, and it kicks the crap out of your friend, right? It just kicks the crap out of him. And you say, I love Elish Norn, and you see on the internet, and this is like not, I don't think, a far-fetched, like, mystical land, okay? Because I've been at events and talked to people who say, yeah, I would love to have this card. Everyone, this is an iconic judge promo. This is not a whatever judge promo this isn't the land tax judge promo this is a well-loved judge promo from the day it was spoiled and you take your 150 a month and you say listen i'm gonna save a hundred of that a month and this is from 2014 by the way it's not from the last five years this is from 2014 this has been this price that whole time because it's loved this came out the same run as force of will yeah so but this is and you save a hundred dollars a month for four months you save up you save up you save up and you buy your elish norn grand cena by judge promo and then you find out that wizards of the coast just gives it away for 35 bucks poof it's like oh like why did i like why did i save i could have just been buying other cards like what was the point of that like what was the point like you th these cards need to be special the specialty matters in the collector's version of the card in the specialty version of the card so for them to make this right why why like what is the purpose to just so they i know the professor of Tulare community college he did a video about this there was no reason there was no reason to reprint this exact card. None. I, to me, for a cash grab, they, they could have just put a new art. There's like a spe there's like a moto art for Elish Norn. Yeah, and the judge. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's like like every single time they reuse like the Azusa art. It's like wh why? Like what? Why did I? Why did I spend seventy dollars in this on this nice version of the card? I could have just spent twenty dollars on the regular version on an HP copy, right? Why did I be a judge? Why did I spend all this time to do that? 
Like, what was the purpose of that if you're just going to just give it away or just do it again? You know, I'm of the opinion that they shouldn't reuse art ever. Give all the artists all the work, okay? That's my general thoughts. I understand it's a little unrealistic, right? And the art direction, they'd have to hire a bunch more people and whoop the friggin' do. You know, but I'm of the opinion that they should have... Like in Pokemon. Pokemon, outside of like reg random commons, they don't reuse art. You're not going to see Charizard VMAX in a random set. It's always going to be sitting in Shining Fates, Champion's Path, and Darkness of Blaze in its three variants. That's all that's going to exist, okay? So Pokemon, they just, and if they make another Charizard VMAX, it's going to be different. Yeah, and but the special versions of cards should not be reused at all. You know what I mean? Like They could have easily hired Seth uh, Seb McKinnon to do an Elish Norn crazy looking made it look so nice nope let's just take this 400 this is a 400 dollars card do you understand the 400 dollars is a lot of money to people people with roommates that's like rent that's like rent dude that's not and, and you just give it away poof poof it's gone and okay yeah the people who don't have one it's like that but then again you're also getting like the cheap knockoff you get the dollar tree version of phyrexian elish norn then again, you could say that this in revised duels or the Dollar Tree and land to that. But after 25 years, it kind of undollar treed itself. Wizards choose to make private to corners in the weirdest, most frustrating places for their customers. Yeah. You know what's really funny, right? I'm talking about like my cube. And I'm gonna be finishing it. And the and I also want to re-put back together a few EDH decks. I think about Commander Legends, and I'm like, I because I like when, when I make my decks, I like them to be foiled out. Okay, I'm that guy. I like every card to be max rarity. I like them because I like the collecting part of it too. And I play, I no joke, I play EDH to just put money on the table, okay? It's not a competitive format. I'm, it's not a grind. But like, some of these cards are unplayable. Like, I can tell you right here. Like, I have like a general idea. Like, I immediately could pull out this card here because it's so curved up. Here's another one, Secret Lair Cards. This, you think this can't be on the list? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind if you don't think this could be on the list. It's like, oh, I bought the secret layers because they can never reprint them. That also goes for Walking Dead. That also goes for Walking Dead. They could easily do Walking Dead 2 and put one of those randomly, the original ones are randomly, into the second run of Walking Dead secret layers. There's nothing stopping them. Marquee art uh is like the best art version or the best variant you know what i mean like i'm okay if you want to reprint cards we we could disagree to agree but i understand you need game pieces you know i i, I got it yeah the original jace you know but uh, you know if you want to reprint the cards for people to play i get it it's fine it's fine you know what I mean? Just uh, people have to come to the grips to understand that that means that you can be, you're taking the risk, right? You're taking the risk by buying cards that are not on the reserve list, money-wise. But you get to enjoy them. There's value in that. Play with the cards. There's tons of value in that too, okay? I understand. And I don't think that standard, that's an issue with Mythic Rare. It's an issue with Draft, you know? You know, the issue, one of the main issues is making the cards you need to play happen to be impossible to get. The Wizards have been dealing with that for years. The Wizards with the funny face counter spell. Oh, fingers. Alpha, alpha artwork. What's up, JP? I'm so excited for magic events at the Bearded Dragon coming back next month. I'm excited for events in general, folks. I have booked my flight. I have booked my tickets. I'm going to Gen Con this year. I am looking forward to that a lot. And, oh, I also want to touch on one other thing, a more controversial subject. Uh, the question was asked in Discord by Fazgar about what's my thoughts on Therese Nielsen. And I guess Noah Bradley, too. Right? Woo! So, Gen Con is September 15th through the 20th in indianapolis i will be there if you're at kilroy's the wednesday of you could see me get very very drunk i'm gonna blog i'm gonna vlog it i'm gonna do a vlog of gen con uh i don't know how much cash i'm showing up with but it's probably gonna be a lot and the seven band racist cards so similar to the way that um 
language changes over time. And usually it does change to the softer, where it's like we're a little more uh, conservative-ish. But I want you to think about something, right? In the 1950s, not well, the, the cards that got banned were like Invoke Prejudice and Crusade, Army of Allah, or whatever. I think it was Army of Allah. I don't, I don't remember. Okay, Jihad. I know Jihad was one of them. Bottle, uh, Stone Throwing Devils. Right, yeah, those cards, right? So, in the 1950s, here's a little like history lesson of the world. The world was quite, you know, censored. Just like, you know, we can call it like PG or whatever, but like people would say, don't say that, don't say that, don't say these words, don't say that. You know, everyone had to be prim and proper. That was the culture of the 1950s, the roaring 50s, right? Then the 60s came and we became, you know, a little more open. Then the 70s and 80s came and things got a little tighter. And then the 90s came, we just said, what the fuck ever. And the 90s were a very rebellious time. So, where what am I getting to out with this? The point is, language, culture, things change, and companies go back on things very quietly. Although well, they were so loud about Therese Nielsen that they might never, uh, it might take a very long time. Now, do I think that they're going to cut or return to using her anytime soon? No. This decade? Probably not. Do I think she's ever going to want to work with wizards again, even 20, 30 years from now? She's still alive? No. But is the possibility there? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. To think that they will never, because they could easily, with like Noah Bradley, or they could just say, listen, we listened to Rich Shea's article that he wrote, how upset he was as a Muslim person. Rich Shea wrote an article about how he loved the fact that those Arabian Nights cards existed because they represented his culture. It was on Medium. Great article. Great article. He was like, Wizards of the Coast has like decided that my culture is now racist. Okay? So the point that I'm really making about those cards... Now, obviously not Invoke Prejudice, because Invoke Prejudice is just on the reserve list also. Right? Invoke Prejudice is... Uh, Never not been controversial. How about that? Let's just let's just say that. Evoke Prejudice has been controversial the entire time that I've been knowing magic cards, right? Those cards can change. And if they ever decide that they're going to return to working with Therese Nielsen, like maybe Therese Nielsen just says, listen, I now agree with everything Wizard of the Coast says. I agree with the whole movement. I don't know either. I didn't even, I, first of all, I didn't realize that Twitch had an app for laptops, right? I just say, it might work on YouTube. Now, if you want to try that, stream on YouTube at a uh, box break network. But I'm not saying they're going to. But if they ever do, the first thing they're going to do is reprint Force of Will. What up, Rock and Rojas? How you doing? That's the first thing that they're going to do. Okay, is reprint Force of Will. Thank you to like that. So I would not touch them. Now, if you want the cards because you like them, that's different. I have cards because I like them. Does this make sense? I have cards because I like them. But these are different. These will never be reprinted on a legally contract binding contract. The reserve list cards. Those are the only cards that I will tell you you can put down as an investment. Okay? Cards can be investments. It's not like Pokemon where even new cards can be definitely considered investments. You get the, you know, like a Charizard VMAX, you grade it, gets a 9 or a 10, you keep. Well, I gotta check that. I thought everything was sent out. If you still have it, I'll send it out. I will uh, throw in some packs as well. I'd have, I thought that I had sent everyone's stuff out. 1996 World Champion? Sure, sure. Sure. Specialty, like, dated things, I guess you could say are fine. Like, the only argument that I would, like, say against... Although they can do it, too. There's nothing stopping them. There's nothing stopping them would be like pre-release cards 
so like I've thought about I've thought about this before. Is like, would you say like pre-release cards or variants of cards? And I definitely have a lot of pre-release versions of cards, right? But there's nothing stopping them from printing that too. Yeah, Rojas, I will check that. I just pretty sure I had uh I thought I had sent everyone's orders out. But anyway. That's my point. And I think it sucks really hard that Wizards of the Coast would just do that. We'll just reprint just straight up a $400 version of a card. Because there's opportunity cost to $400. You know what I mean? It's, that's not uh, that's not an irrelevant sum of money in, in cards. You know? That's not an irrelevant sum of money to uh, anyone, honestly. You know? That's dealing in, like, magic cards. You know, like, if you're, like... Like, I don't care about, like, the multi-millionaire who also has, like, a deck. Like, they'll be fine. I'm talking about, like, the guys who, like, saved up for their deck. And they put in, like, three months worth of, like, magic money. And they bought an Elish Norn. You know? You should be able to buy that card with confidence. Why they did not reprint the buy a box art for Celestial Colonnade on the... I mean, listen, I'm happy they did it. You know, I'm happy that they did not. Also, uh, Thazgar... I'm bringing up about the, uh, as I get ready to open some more battle styles for me, right? As, um, you mentioned about Therese Nielsen and all that, right? And the band cards is that notice how the Ther Therese Nielsen's cards didn't like go up based on that, right? And when they banned her from that, like the buy box birds didn't see some crazy parabolic spike. Also, everybody I knew was trying to liquidate those banned cards, like Crusade, Invoke Prejudice. I'm not Invoke Prejudice, reserve this card. But like Stone Throwing Devils. No one cared. It's like, no, no one cared. Like, that's not. That's like this like weird thing where, like, I'm not going to just buy a card because of some weird policy that, that all of a sudden Wizards of the Coast is like a social. Uh, like justice company and no one cared it, it, if people were really thinking it would be an investment now you might have the one or two got people or the three few hundred people that freak out and go do stuff but usually those people don't have the money to move markets you know yeah i mean well here's the thing right if you're playing in commander i would rec i would always ask hey rule zero you guys care if i play crusade i guarantee you 90% of tables are going to be like, what do you mean? Yeah, go ahead. Like, no, like, like that was such a, what's going on? What's going on, Nick? What I'm saying is this, right? No one cared when they unbanned those things. When, when they banned those cards, it didn't, it didn't make the force of will from eternal masters go to like 3000, like to like $400. No one was stacking up on them. There's tons of magic. Uh, Time Spiral Remastered is good. Uh, when Modern Horizons 2 comes out, that's going to be good. Which rules here haven't been removed? I mean, rules. It's Commander, man. Like, it's Commander. Like, this is the thing with Commander. And I got to, like, really bring it up. I got to, like, bring this up more when it comes to Commander. Play what the fuck you want in Commander. It's the reason why the format is as popular as it is. You can't mix the competitive grindy side of you and commander not even in like cdh you know what i mean like it's just play what you want if you're like so worried about winning on in commander or whatever or like everything's got to be so by the book just talk to your team just talk to the pod let me uh let me continue this hunt for this uh thing yeah uh, yeah That's my thoughts. That is my thoughts. That. You always see this, but to me, it should not. Eh. I think people can play what they want. You know, with that, you know? Like, whatever. Like, if they want to play CDH, let them play competitive commander. It's not like, ain't no, ain't no, like, ain't no sweat off my back for what other people want to do. You know what I mean? Do I find it weird that uh, Demonic Consultation is like a $20 card? Sure. Does it affect me? Not really.
down the train we go. On. Battle Styles, guys. You know, Battle Styles is going to go down in history as a very strange set. Chilling Rain is going to tell me a lot about the Pokemon market. Chilling Rain is really going to tell me a lot. Because... Chilling Rain looks to be a great set, right? But... I think it's unquestionable that the Pokemon Bull Run has slowed significantly since PSA is no longer the, uh, you know, taking submissions. I think it's, it would be crazy to say that we have the same momentum that we had back in January, okay? I think that is very fair. I think you can look at the video views of a lot of the main, uh, you know, Pokemon YouTube channels and all that stuff. So to see where we actually are at is going to be a very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, sure. Check the Discord. There's a discount code today. So like... The reason I say that is, if Chilling Rain is really hot, like Vivid Voltage was, because and Battle Styles, you could find Battle Styles in like random stores, like even ones that are doing that, you could still find that, you know. Like you could still find Battle Styles. So like, if Chilling Rain comes out hot, it'd be like you know it would be interesting to show you no matter how hot the market was, if a set is not, you know, recognized to be great. No amount of momentum can push it, you know, because like, what if uh, Steam Siege came out? But the question is, is how big did it did it stop the momentum? That did it completely halt it? That it'll slow down showing, right? We will see. But that often leads to very good buying opportunities. I think Battle Styles at the current price, really good buying opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Really good buying opportunity. If you want to get some boxes of battle styles to hold on to you know trying to buy into the hype is never going to be a good idea it's never going to really be a great idea i'm just running white codes the white code city but unfortunately not the best you know because i think battle, battle style still has a hundred dollar card in it also i got a pokemon basement that's why i wasn't able to uh stream the other day i had so many boxes downstairs yo it was crazy the white code can we push you know like but i'm okay with a cool off period you know like that's the thing where it's like a few people who got into this who are like they don't know anything uh like there's a bunch of like secret layers i forgot i ordered also <laughs> Put so many of those damn early secret layers, man. I don't have to do with them. But you know, like people like have been hitting me up because they got in a Pokemon at this like period of time where it was so nuclear hot that anything you touched made you money. So that attracted a lot of people. You know, the story of Pokemon the last nine months since basic, honestly, we were going on about a year since the Logan Paul thing what was that last July. So we're we're coming up on like a year long bull run for a card game. That's crazy. Ooh, he's Big Bear. You learn stuff. Wow. You know, so my point is this, is that a cooldown 
and giving people a chance to take stock of what they have see if they've over leveraged what you're gonna start seeing in my personal opinion and in the history of this is in about six to seven months maybe like after the new games drop right like after the new pokemon game like rcs comes out next january and all that so maybe like two years after the pokemon bull run started you're going to see a lot of things start hitting the market when PSA gets their cards back. And that's going to be a very good opportunity because it's happening a little bit in the sports market right now. I've heard it's like a lot of cards are not going for the 500 that people thought they were. They're going for like 150. That's going to be a good opportunity. If you want to pick up stuff for your collections, for your just your holdings, if you want to hold on to stuff in the long run, you know. That's another thing. It's like everyone thought we were going to see like all these reprints. If these reprints do actually show up and come through the door, right? Then they're going to come out in a time where it's it's a little colder and there might be a chance for you to really scoop up some nice deals. You know what I'm saying? There might be a really good chance. No, you don't have to pay any more shipping. I'll send it I'll send it all out together. Go to the order Z. Oh, burning shadows. Let's do this. Well, yeah. two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. You honestly might be able to. Like, I'm not kidding. You might get the opportunity to pick up like that Tyranitar V. You might see it come down. Like, when everyone's expectations, when people see what happens with this in a lot of markets, and you see this, things go crazy. Oh, I hope you pull that so bad. I hope you pull the Burning Shadows Lizard so bad. I want to pull that card on. I haven't had a, I haven't had a laser pull. Since we pulled the blue Urshifu, to be honest with you. For uh, Stitches to Clown. I also have to check. Uh, I haven't checked the uh, the grading update in a while. You might get it. So what happens in this and a lot of other markets is a lot of people do dumb shit. I, can't, I know you might not be able to believe this, but people do stupid shit in this world. And the stupid shit that people will do in the card world is they start using leverage in the same way they would in stocks. So people will take out credit cards to buy singles to grade them. And all of a sudden they're realizing that they're not making nearly as much money on their cards as they anticipated that they were going to make. So they have to recoup their losses. This happens all the time when the reserve list and magic starts to stir. You get these people on the back end who start FOMOing in and they start buying a bunch of stuff with credit cards. People will take out personal loans. No one's ever ahead of the game with that. So you are going to see a retrace. It has to happen. For a market to be healthy, there must be some level of retrace. Now, do I think first edition PSA 10 Charizards are going to retrace? No. The reason I say that is the people who are buying that have a lot of money. Okay. I don't think that you're going to find a situation where Justin Bieber and Logan Paul are going to need to start liquidating their uh, Pokemon cards. Little Weevil action for our friend JP. So, play the long game and stay the course. The time to buy is the time to buy your stuff that you really want is during those bear markets, man. So I have you haven't the last reserveless magic card I bought as Burning Shadows continues to be uh, a pain in our ass to say the least.
Jeez, man. Ugh. That's going to be the time to buy. Honestly. You got to stay the course. Don't get emotional. You know, if you're unsure about something, feel free to, you know, hit me up in Discord and ask and be like, yo, should I do this? If you're buying because you're afraid the price of something might go higher, that's a terrible reason to buy it. You know, if you were like, oh my God, like I might, I might miss my opportunity. There's always... I remember... Just bought a collection of Neo cards. Now, those are good purchases. Did you get good deals? As we are getting slaughtered in the Burning Shadows world right here. Burning Shadows is, is genuinely... Like, we pulled a couple of the energies, but god damn, these things. Post it when it comes in. Don't be afraid to let us know how you paid, what you paid either. Those old cards, the thing is, is I'm talking mostly on the new stuff. The old stuff, there has, there's going to be another bull run of the old stuff there is. And you'll probably see a big raise in, in like Neo era cards. Let's rip the green codes for luck. So that might be, it might be a good time to pick up Neo era cards. That might be the next one on the next bull run. I imagine like the next, you're going to see a big pump in Pokemon probably come 2024, 2025. Nice. No, that's good. As burning. Father. Fucker. Can I at least get a damn white code? At this point, I'll, I'll settle for like a regular hollow. There. Jeez. Rojas, I thought we were just like, you know, just run through like every single Burning Shadows pack and nothing would turn up. Tremendous print quality on Burning Shadows cards. As you can see, look at the, look at the curling. On this thing. This would probably be the Charizard. It's something. A little Dark Rai GX, not bad. Well, little something. Sheesh. Can we get another white code, though? Coming through in the close. Coming through in the close. Of course, that could be regular hollows. Another curly-ass card in the corners. <laughs> I'm seeing double. Burning shadows, burning cheeks. Didn't you do that last time? That's a great idea. That's a great idea, by the way. Now, see, now you're learning. And a sneezel. You buy big collections at discounts, you keep what you want, you sell back the rest. That. A couple of these. Because, man, that wasn't very good. That, that Zard Chase, man, on Burning Shadows is crazy. Thank you so very much, though. Always appreciate it, you know? We haven't even had, like, our first pack magic like we used to have. So, like, Pokemon's in a weird space right now. I got a lot of chilling rain coming in. I'm placing a big bet on it. If I get stuck with it, you're gonna that might be one where I end up like selling off some boxes. You know? I hope breaks are good. Got a nice big fat bet on it though. Yeah, no, Burning Shadows is definitely worth the champion's path. <laughs> Burning Shadows is it's got a great top, but ooh, that bad bottom and that middle.
And I'll get this, and a f I'm gonna throw in some goodies for you. I made you wait way longer than you're supposed to. Yeah, I'm really waited, excited for Chilling Rain too. I talked to my guy. They, I talked to both of my guys. They said we're good for. I have ten cases coming in. Yeah, Eevee Heroes is awesome. The, I, I posted Eevee Heroes in the Pokemon spoilers. I know JP, you said that you're not like super into it. I very into it. I'm not saying you know you're wrong for like not liking it. That, that that's crazy talk. But I'm very 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 excited. For EV Heroes. Set's gonna be impossible to find. Impossible. All the Japanese vendors are just want like crazy markups already. I remember when I started, I was like, you know what I can do? I can like sell Japanese packs for like 250. And then that immediately was gone. Yeah, nah, you could have bought like you could have bought sets. You could have bought like three to four at the at the floor of those tens. Nah, I understand. Yo, let me check the uh let me check grading status. Thank you so much. Origin coming in with us with that prime resub. Thank you so much. Uh it'll probably come to English. They're, they're gonna milk it. They're gonna move that. They're gonna they're gonna they're not gonna I'm not gonna say what they're gonna do. I don't know. Maybe it's gonna maybe that's gonna be the uh specialty set, the 25th anniversary set. I have stuff in November. He hasn't updated this in a in a hundred years. Let's go to the other one. Oh, uh, at Gen Con? Yeah, Gen, Gen Con's in four months though, man. You might find one by then. I don't have any June 20, 45 day. November 20 day is my first that I have. Still in grading. Alright, folks. February 5 day is in grading. February five days in grading. I don't know what they're gonna do. We know that the Marnie collection is coming in. No, no, Gen Con's in September, man. September fifteenth. Still in grading. But it's like, I want like my five days from February back. That that's all I'll say. That that's I know like what happened in February, right? So what happened in February with PSA is it got leaked. That their prices were going up. And you guys remember, for those who have been around since then, it got leaked. And then everybody, their mother, their cat, everyone on this this side of the planet sent them stuff. They got sent a mountain of cards, right? So they've got to have a crazy amount of subs for February before they, you know, raise their price. So, I don't know. I guess what we can do is uh, if I see someone get a submission back, I'll be like, hey, what's the serial on that? I mean, you don't really get them back in a reasonable time with Beckett either. This is how it's been for over a year. You know what I mean? I think like we're a long way away from it being back to the time frames that are put on. Like the idea of 45 days so far, so far gone. What's going on, Oblivion? So, like, the grades have barely moved. I'm trying to see, like, what came in. August. So, the August 20 days are in Q&A. The Octobers are in Assembly. My November 40, 20 days are still in grading. 45 days in Research and ID. We're at the point now. I'm going to be getting back some cards. I do not remember the conditions of any of the cards I sent in. I know I sent a lot of bait. What I did was I sent a lot of base set cards. Right. So when this whole thing started, I sent probably every base set card. Every base set hollow, I just sent it out. I was like, you know, I'm just going to hold them. Fill out fill out some, uh, some positions. Like, what am I going to do with the cards? I don't know. But the thing is, I was paying $7 each. What's the what's the point? At this point, top loaders are like a dollar each. Pay six dollars more and you get a graded slab. Do you see you guys see noble hierarch? No, it happened in noble hierarch. IG noble hierarch, 
or is that just a typo? I actually was talking to a friend of mine about Noble Hierarch uh, yesterday. Because I have a friend who just does not get it. He does not get it. He says, no, Ignoble Hierarch? What is it, from the Sp Modern Horizons? Oh, yeah, I did. What, look at you coming in, trying to get me to talk about Modern Horizons. Two spoilers. What do you think that graded gold card off the wheel spin? Ooh. Way back? Oh, it's literally Ignoble Hierarch. What the fuck is that? Damn. Damn. Live reaction to a card. Live reaction to a Magic the Gathering card. Ignoble Hierarch. How about that? This is a... This is a really good card. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's a very, very, very good magic card. Oh, the uh, are you talking about the Zigzagoon that I sent in? Yeah, that's that's in the 45 day. That's in the pile. I think that's what it was, right? Uh, it's not the first green goblin. There's like a like a green like there's a bunch of green goblins. Well, usually red green, but so maybe it might be the first mono green. Uh, let's look at some other cards, huh? I haven't looked at these yet. Remember another non token creature enters the battlefield and control investigate. Sign by your next clues. What's going on, Rocky? Yeah, I think it was a oh, dreadnought. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it was. It was from like a sword today. Good point, wart and shit. Yeah. Exclusive normal reveals top X one library. You may put a non land permanent card from X on, on the battlefield. So you take their cards. Oh, that's cool. Surveil. They're really just giving you one of each. Flay Essence. Yeah, you remember when the cards that like killed planeswalkers were always rare? Yeah, like I don't remember what it was. I mean, I, it's uh, that's why that's why I put your names on them. A mythic. If you control two merfolks, has indestructible. When it attacks, draw a card. Merfolk God. How about that? What's up, Rocky? I like this right here. Oh, did you guys see this? Did you guys see this artwork? Oh, he's going to be super excited. Did you guys see this artwork? Does anyone notice something about this artwork? This is the most flavorful artwork you need. And expect a foil, pack foil Imperial Recruiter to be in my... Uh... So this is Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, and this is Pestermite. So in Cube... One of the decks that you could build, Imperial Recruiter can grab Kiki Jiki, who could clone Imperial Recruiter to grab Pester Might or Deceiver Exarch. How fucking cool is this artwork? How sweet is this artwork? Seriously. I, I will be selling my regular ass Imperial Recruiter. Oh wow, I feel like a god. I just pulled out of my cube. Yeah. So this is this is for sale if anyone needs a foil Imperial Recruiter, because I need one of these. Heavy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, look at that. Kiki Jiki Mary Breaker and Pester Might. That's awesome. Let's keep talking. Let's look at the rest of this. Uh, I like this, so I'll search for tomorrow card. Uh this card is cool. Yeah, no, my rise is two is an amazing set. I'm really enjoying it. So What the fuck? Oh, I mean, uh, usually with master sets, I'll draft them like once or twice. 
you know, like, I'm just buying singles. I like, think I need a foil force negation. So draft it. So draft it, man. Draft it. So just, you know, budget some money and draft. You know, see if you can, like, enter with, like, store credit. Sell cards to the store for, like, uh, with a bump. If you have the stuff laying around, extras. And just draft. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to have fun. Responsibly. So what the fuck? Had a bunch of people hit me up trying to, like, tell me how to, uh... Yeah, you know, like, spend old money on it. You know, like, if you just have overstock. It's okay. Have fun. This card's crazy. This card is crazy. 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 Uh, this card's... This card is gonna change, like, some things in, in modern. I don't think that people understand how good Mistress Factory is. Mistress Factory is a 3-3 blocker on a land for, for one mana. That's really nuts. Yeah, these are cool. These are cool. I kind of wish they were fetchable. Uh, this, this is a, uh, this is gonna be a bread basket. Good card here. Uh, we knew this. Uh, I think this card is gonna change modern a lot. The Karn decks, uh, one of the main issues with, like, a lot of, like, Tron decks or, or even, like, Eldrazi Tron is, like, decks that have reach are, like, really good against it. Like, really good against, like, Eldrazi-style decks that they need to, like, lock with Chalice. Zurin Orb kind of changes that, right? Remember, this card was banned. Oh, this card's great. I'm going to talk about Grief. We're, we're going to get to Grief, by the way. I'm going I'm, to I'm tell you about a bet I have with a friend of mine. Uh, this card shouldn't have been printed for Pauper. This card has to be banned. This card has to be now. You can tinker? Yeah, you can tinker out your tab duel. Oh, you can tinker them away. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they're going to go in any cube that plays tinker and tinker's banned. And, you know, uh, tinker's not a fun card. Like, like even in, like... Oh, you want the... Which... The, the old border hermit or underworld hermit what do you guys think of the sketches what do you guys think of these i like them everyone hates them but i like them oh uh, chatterstorm chatterstorm is way too good for pauper this is bananas good like you play four copies of first day of class and you play like rituals Metamorphoses and cantrips, you're good to go. You could easily, easily, easily. I think Lotus Petal is still legal, right? You, you can. There are God Hands that can kill in turn one. Like Rite of Flame is legal. All of the, all the rituals are legal. And Pauper, this is way too fucking good for Pauper. This card's so shiny. These cards here. There's so much bulk in the reprint slot. There's so much bulk. Let me not do this. Let me go uh, uh, there. Let me go here for a second. Why, yeah. Go. Yeah, we keep going back. They, yeah, I've played Pauper. I played Pauper when all the good storm cards were legal. I promise you right now, like, that card is just as good as Empty DeWarrens was. And first day of class is, like, better than Goblin Bushwhacker was for that deck. Because you play it in the front of it, you, you basically pre kick the card. So you go like first day of class, and then you have like cards you could put like in your you could like I think there are some common like lessons you could put to just like draw cards like eh, it's way too good. Speaking of hermit, here's this one right here. Oh the oh the bird oh yeah the queen of the bears I can't bear this card right here. It's unbearable. This card's great. This is a storm uh, ooze. Oh I definitely want to build Garth. Uh, Garth goes infinite with any haste enabler and dead eye navigator. Just fun fact. Just any haste enabler. So Rhythm of the Wild is really good because it gives, uh, of course, uncounterable. Uh, of course, you could go old school style like Fires of Yavimaya. 
Uh, lightning greaves, of course. Uh, but just that, it goes interesting. Ran out of sleeves. Oh, yeah, by the way, Harmon, I have a bunch of packs for you of the EV sleeves. Let me know if you want me to, like, ship it out. This card's really, really good, by the way. It's an Earth guy. Hermit, do you need this card, too? Hermit, you gotta get Deranged Hermit. Serverless card, man. You gotta get Deranged Hermits. Although, now they're, they're 12 times as much as they were a few weeks ago. Sword. This is annoying. I need them to make a Shinobi. Yeah, man. You gotta get Deranged Hermits. Just, that's that's your card. Just start investing in that. Also, I want to see no more Deranged Hermits at events. This card's actually crazy, by the way. It's Chatterfang. See, I like this. I, I like this. This is unique. I also like I like the um the friggin' uh invocations too. You know? I like I like unique cards, even if they're ugly. Well then, then again, I hate that faithful saluting art. I, I think this card's cool. I like this. Alright. I mean, let me just, I'm going to skip talking about this and I'm going to talk about it in a minute. People are overhyping this card. I don't think this card's good. I need a foil of this. I haven't seen this yet. Holy shit. Holy shit. That is beautiful. Where'd you go? That is beautiful. So now what I have with you plus the sleeve mask ship on Friday. Okay. So let's talk grief. So grief reads uh two black black for a elemental incarnation with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, thoughts is your opponent, you don't lose life. That alone is a reasonable magic the gathering card right three two menace comes in in the mid mid game thought seizes your opponent okay nothing to write home about evoke which means you can cast it for its evoke cost and if you do it creates a trigger that you sacrifice it after it enters the battlefield right this card is absolutely, positively broken. You do, No, the way it works is you evoke the card, it enters the battlefield, and it creates a trigger. The trigger is what sacrifices it. So you have the opportunity to respond. So this creates two triggers that you choose to stack, right, of how you want to stack them. You could stack it so that you discard first and then that. Let's go to a different card. Now, remember this, guys. You know me as the money guy. I have played high-level magic. Like, day two, GPs, PTQ top eights. I've been in testing rooms. This is absolutely a thing you can do. You go grief. You thought to use your opponent, and then you ephemerate your grief this is not a casual play this is not a lol haha -ha, funny cute play this is an extremely competitive play and then next turn you're going to thought seize them again i am of the utmost opinion to the point where i have multiple bets with people that either ephemerate or grief will be banned within two months of the card coming out and I think eventually grief will be banned in every single format and restricted advantage. Grief is unbelievably good. Like, I cannot stress to you. The question isn't, is this card good? That is not the question. The question is, where do we rank this creature amongst the greatest creatures of all time. It's that damn good. This card is up there with like Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. It's not even, I mean, you attack with the grief. 
Like, you also get all your mana on turn two. So, like, just think like this start. Is this like an egregious start? Concealed Courtyard. Exile, like, or uh, Inquisition of Kozilek or something, right? I don't care. You go Grief. Take their one drop. Ephemerate. Take their other one drop, which might be the removal. Upkeep. Take your next card, right? Your two drop. Whatever you drew for the turn, we're going to take that too now. Play a land, play Dark Confidant. That game is over, okay? I'll tell you, that game is, it's not just over, it's done. It's completely, the game is over, okay? I've played many, many high-level games of Magic. Now, let's think about this. How do you interact with this? How do you actually interact with this, with this play? Even in Legacy. You have the entire card pool in the history of Magic the Gathering, right? How do you interact with this? Because you could stack it in such a way that you thought seize them before you, you ephemerate. You could stack it so the stack reads uh, layer one. So if you're, you're going to force of will the grief. That's fine. You lost two cards. I lost two cards. Now I play my one drop. Now I just play my... Now we just continue the game. That's like mental misstep again. Yeah. It's not even good. Force of will is not even good against this card. It's not. You're there losing two cards. You lost two cards. You're in a deck that wants to discard cards from your opponent's hand. You're decimating your opponent's hand on turn one. Now, your opponent is playing death and taxes. They went first. They played a land and said go. You went grief. You look at them. So they have two options. They can go swords to plowshares, the grief. That's going to get sacrificed anyway. Or, <laughs> so they're not going to do that. So you just take the thing, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't think you do. Like, if you're going to play Leyline of Sanctity, I, I don't think you play Leyline of Sanctity in the main. I just think you have to ban this card. This card is obnoxiously good. This card is significantly better than Hogak. And I called Hogak. I wasn't on Twitch, but I called Hogak. When I read Hogak, I said this card is going to destroy Modern. And I was 100% right. There is nothing that you... And it's not that egregious of a start. I'm not sitting here going, Oh, it's better than other cards, too. There's Cloud Shift. There's Undying Evil. There's other ways to, like, blink this thing on turn one. There's other one-mana blink cards. We're going to ban all three of those? You're going to ban Cloud Shift? You're going to ban Undying Evil? Like, are you going to really sit here and tell me that you want to ban Undying Evil? No way. So I'm connected with some of, like, the larger, like, testing people, right? The people who play, like, major tournaments, you know? And they've been a little more docile as COVID's happened, right? They're all in agreement that this is the only question. The question isn't if this card is getting banned. The question is, is this card better than, like, Snapcaster Mage? That, that's the only thing we're talking about. Like, is this card better than, like... It's, like, way better. This card's way better than Tarmogoy, if ever was. <laughs> yeah, all right. This card is insane. Unmask is already good. Unmask is, like, already a good card, you know? So, Grief is pre-selling on TCG Player. I want to show you guys something. Remember, we are in a... We don't have everything open, right? Everything's not already open. This is for competitive. This is for competitive. Usually, commander cards can have like a pre sale tag that's high. This card is mandatory if you want to play in a competitive modern tournament. You cannot play modern without playing this set. Like, I'm telling you right now, you I don't care how you build it. You can build it Jund, you know, with like Undying Evils if you really want that. You can build it uh, just black white. Like, you can play like four Grief, four Tide Hollow Skullers. You know, discard, removal, grief, ephemerate, dark confidant, Liliana the Veil, and that's it. You're good. You're good to go. You're good to go. But here's the problem. Like, so you're talking about elves, right? Like, or just like any other deck, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Short, short the shit out of this card. Like, 100% sell this card. If you are not, if you don't have tournaments to play, you you open this. Uh, shit, I'd sell this for fucking two collector's packs. But fucking... That card is batshit. 
And I am not the type of person to just hype up a card. And this is one of the first times we ever talked about like playing the game of Magic on the stream, which is kind of neat. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay talking about it. I'm just like spoilers. We'll talk more on Monday about Modern Horizon spoilers as well, because uh, there'll be the full list out. Yeah, 100%. It's the Urza Force of Negation. That is the chase card. That and the fetches are the, like not counting the fetch lands and the reprints. That's the chase card. The only difference is, is I never said we need to ban Force of Negation. Force of Negation is a brilliantly designed magic card. The Force of Negation gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Grief gets a 0 out of 10. That card is miserably designed. Free spells fuck shit up. When Mishra's Bauble is one of the best cards in modern, you know something's wrong. That's all I'm getting at. Okay? And this card is way better. Like, that's what I'm saying. Free spells just do shit. You know, and then you have, like... There's other decks, too. That just... Even the card on its face is, like, it's kind of egregious. Do you know the difference? Like, say, like, you're playing Dredge, right? And you have Haggle, which is the spell side of Merchant of the Veil. Do you... And you're playing against Hate, right? Hate pieces post-board, not counting, like, Leyline of the Void. Like, your opponent's playing, like, Rest in Peace or Graph Digger's Cage. Do you know the difference between, like, duressing somebody and or doing it for free? It's huge. It's huge. It is huge. Huge. The difference between being able to turn one stink we nymph versus not. It's huge. It's the biggest thing in the game. You're, you're, you're turning your engine on. You're dredging 10 to 15 more cards before you would have if it was duress. That card is crazy. It's crazy. Grief is going to go down in history. And I'm just calling it right now. I'm putting it on the internet right now. That way, there is no bullshit in the future. You know, it's like, oh, blah, blah. I'm going on right now to say it. And if I'm wrong, I got to eat that egg. Grief is going to go down in history. as one of the greatest mistakes they've ever printed. And it is going to be banned in many formats. I think it's guaranteed to get banned in modern. It's way too good. Like, way too good. People try to cast Thought Not Seer intentionally in that format. There's no damn way. On turn three. There's no way they're not banning this card. Yeah, clip that. You can clip that. You can clip it and ship it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope for some reason, like, people aren't able to draw a land. <laughs> like, it's not that crazy of a combo. It's just ephemerate, a black card, grief, and the land. Like, am I asking too much? Which sucks, which really sucks, because the rest of the set is really cool. The rest is Goblet Bombardment's really cool. Torok, I really like Torok. The Squirrel cards, like yo, they push all these Squirrel cards so heavy. I'm sitting here like, yo, is there like a Squirrel deck in Modern? How do you win against this card? Honestly, you you like you go play Commander. Like unless I was playing in like a tournament for money that I cared about. I want to play modern with this card around. Uh, same exact, re same exact thing I told people to do when Hogak was out. By the way, they're like, "Yo, how do I beat this deck?" I said, "Honestly, just I don't know. Go, go play Nintendo Switch. Like, like, uh, like, don't, like, don't, don't bother. Like, if they're gonna fucking ruin the format, like, don't. You don't gotta play into it. It's fine. Like, you could play the deck too. The mirror, the mirror is probably super skill intensive. You know." Like, the, the mirror is, like, if you really, like, you know, if you like mid-range, like, it's going to be that. But I'm telling you, it's just, it's too degenerate of a start. And it's, like, miserable. It's, like, a miserable start. It's, like, oh, I'll keep seven. Please don't have grief. All right, here we go. Ex play on, play Concealed Courtyard. Exile of Tide Hollow Skuller. Cast Grief. Oh, nice. My hand was really good. Like, you're playing Heliod, and your hand is, like, Noble Hierarch. Uh... Horiok Champion, Collected Company, Heliod, and Three Lands. And you're like, oh, nice. My hand is Heliod, Collected Company, and Lands. And now next turn, my opponent's going to take my Heliod, too. Nice. That was fun. Uh, that was fun. I'm, I'm glad I played. I'm glad I am glad I signed up for Modern today. It's, it's not a fun... Like, at least Hogak, you could say, oh, you know, you could draw on some, like, cyborg cards. You know, Hogak was a fast... Like, you know, it was just like a very consistent deck and a very powerful deck. 
but it wasn't like grief. Grief, grief is just miserable. Like grief is like if you juiced up like lantern control and you made that deck too good. Like you printed like a one mana artifact that like sacked and found another one mana artifact, <laughs> and you just like always like get get your lantern lock out like turn one. Yeah, one hundred percent. Could you imagine getting on an airplane, turn one, getting griefed by some like potato? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, could you imagine like getting on an airplane to get griefed? And it just also it becomes very dice rolly because the best way to beat grief is to go first. Like seriously, the best way to beat grief is to go first and have your own grief or have a thought seize. You know, like that's the best way to beat it. So like, I usually don't talk about like cards in such a way. Yeah, nah, nah, I seriously heard anyone. But it's like, can you imagine, like, yo, you're ready? It's been we been a long time. I've been waiting. Finally, come to the tournament. I'm excited. Show up. Turn one. I got my my deck. I've been playing it on Moto. I'm ready. Turn one. Grief. Ephemerate. Okay. All right, we're good. All right, upkeep. We're gonna ephemerate the grief again. I'm gonna play a play a land, and I'm gonna play a friggin' Tarmogoyf. It's like, and you've discarded your opponent's entire hand. Now, now you're sitting on. Like, how do you win the game? But like that, I heard that. I was like, oh, how do how do you win the game? I'm like, dude, you, you win the game. Like, your opponent has no hand on turn one. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been like mind twisted on turn one. I haven't won many games where I got like turn one like balanced, and that's kind of what this is. Where it's like just like turn one like mind twist or balance like it was kind of what it is so that's my take on grief okay and i really wanted to get into it yeah it, but it's cube you know what i mean it's like, all right we're all playing juiced out decks you know grief is probably good enough for cube on its own just as like an unmasked proxy it's just like it's an unmasked that attacks oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> there are decks in magic that can kill you on turn one there are cards that are like designed to like fight against it, but the God Hands, yeah, not in standard. Yeah, you know, like not in like the like the stuff that's like the like restricted, but like in like Legacy and in Vintage, where all the old cards are legal. Yeah, one hundred percent. They try to design it so you can't. But the thing is about like winning a game, and I've said this to people many times, like having conversations about like Dexes, just because. The game hasn't ended doesn't mean the game hasn't ended. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even if like, there's ways of doing damage other than uh, attacking, you know, like, or like milling. You could like mill your opponent out on turn one. Or you like take an extra turn on turn one. Like there, there are cards that just straight up retake take an extra turn. Like you, so you just go after their opponent. But like, if you're playing against somebody and your deck is full of like, one and two drops right and your opponent goes like turn one chalice of the void on one chalice of the void on two which could happen through the god hands especially in the like vintage right you're dead <laughs> like, like you, you, we could play we could do this for another 10 turns but you're done yeah that, that, that's fine but what i mean by that i'm talking more about like and you make the game like unwinnable like if you keep a four land hand and you get griefed Ephemerated. Unless the, the rest of your opponent's hands lands, this game's over. I mean, like, like, just think about the curve. Grief, Ephemerate, Bob, Liliana. You're not winning that game. <laughs> this game, the, the odds of you winning that game are so astronomically low. Astronomically low. You know, we're like the old uh, Callblade days. You know, it's like an old man now. The second brainstorm from Jace, the game was done. The game, we were done. We, you could draw all the vampire cards you wanted. The game was over. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, fun story time. Speaking of something like that, uh, I was playing against a storm player who uh, once yelled "Showtime!" Literally, that's what he was doing while he was playing. Like "Showtime!" Like he was like, making a big deal. He was about to combo off. I'm like, all right. He goes ritual. Okay, ritual. Okay. Manamorphose. Okay. So he has all his lands are tapped. He has four he has four mana. Rituals again. So he has five mana. 
he has a uh, he has an Electromancer in play, right? So he has five mana, and he had Mana Morphos, right? Cast Gifts Ungiven, leaving one floating, right? He goes, gets two Rituals, Pass in Flames, and uh, like some other card, right? I think it was Grape Shot. I go, okay, put the Rituals in your graveyard. He goes, oh, uh, Grape Shot you for four. Like, I'm clearly dead if he just gets another Metamorphos or something, but he doesn't. So, like, yeah, you should make your opponent go through the combo. And he yelled Showtime, too. I, like, I untapped and played, like, a Scavenging Goose and, like, an idol on a Rhetoric, and I was like, all right, I guess I went. I've also played against that. I also played against the guy back in the Treasure Cruise days who uh, was playing Storm, and he Treasure Cruise. He dubbed away both of his Grape Shots. That was fun. He drew his... I made him go through the combo. I was like, go ahead, bro. Like... Where it's one one, you might as well do your shit. And he he delved away his uh, one. He delved away both his grape shots with treasure cruise. That was fun. So yeah, guys, I think grief, grief's a problem. Grief's a big problem. Let's go through the rest. Uh, this I'm excited about. Obviously, this card's neat. This is my favorite artwork in the set so far. I like this card. So many squirrels. Yeah, you guys showed me this. Is there like a... I gotta know like what the specialty version of this looks like. So this is uh, obviously Noble Hierarch for Jun. This is probably gonna be in the cube. Gonna need one of those. The slip. Oh! The silver camel? Let me show you guys what I think of that. The silver. Let's look at the silver camel. Let's find it. Let's not put people's stuff on the internet. Huh? Let's go find the silver camel. Where are you? Where are you? There we go. So, so, what do you guys think that I think this looks like? What do you guys think that I think this looks like? If you guess what's in my mind looking at this card, I will give you a free break of Burning Shadows. If you can guess what I think this is. Actually, I'll give you a free break of uh, Ikoria Collectors. Or two Burning Shadows, if you can guess this. Nope, not Lapras. You only get one guess. Come on, you guys can guess what's in my mind, what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at this. As I pull out a uh, pseudo. That's a really good one. But no. Bazgar, are you still here? If you're still here, I'll let you guess. Like, is this year of the rat reserve list? No. I bet they're going to cut Abyssin's Pilgrim from the cube for the, the higher. Come on, guys. What am I thinking of here? You guys, think, think about me on a personal level. I'll give a hint. I'll give a hint. I'll, I'm going to give this hint, and then I'm going to let everybody take another guess. There is something on... No. There is something on the screen right now that can tip you off to what I'm thinking. It's on the screen right now. Everyone gets another guess. You have to be a little more specific than that, Herman. To be a little bit more specific than that. Mm. 
No, it's not a Pona. It's not a Pona. Rocky says. Divine Beast what? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you right here. open this up so divine beast vanaboris that was the first thing that came to my mind when i saw a steel camel so i'm assuming you would rather the sicoria collectors than two burning shadows right like how I'm telling you right now when they designed this card they were playing Breath of the Wild there's this is uncanny this is uncanny how close that is Thazgar you gotta get through some more Zelda games man Feather Suffocating fumes, also known as a fart. Fully grown, rugged highlands. A startling development. Regal Leosaur. Necropanther. Right, this should be the commander card. Garbage. Riel the Everwise. I like this card. Ooh. Whoa. 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 Wow. Luminous Brood Maw. Full art foil. That's got to be worth something. Archipelagor. Chittering Harvester. Planeswalker. Luca. Nice. Luca Dodrick. Hey, thank you so much. Eric Abden coming in with a sub on YouTube. Cavern Whisperer. But that's got to be pretty good. That's got to be pretty good right there, no? Luminous Brood Moth? Let me see what that's going for, huh? 21. 21. Not bad. Shout out to Divine Beast Va Naboris. Shout outs to Divine Beast Vana Boris. By the way. Thank you, Zelda and Weed. Facts. Big facts right there. I was gonna get into that. I would cut off my toenail fully to get anything about Breath of the Wild too. I am starved from Breath of the Wild 2 news. I am mercilessly starved. Zelda and Kingdom Hearts, when the new game comes out for them, are the only game series that I will just stop working to play through. Money is irrelevant to me when a new Zelda game that I haven't played through is out. You know, like I'm gonna do some, I'm probably gonna stream through Skyward Sword real slow, right? I'm probably going to stream through it, but I am mercifully begging them to release anything about Breath of the Wild 2. I am like parched. There's not, there's no amount of Breath of the Wild that, of the, anything. Uh, no, the, the Kingdom Hearts, nothing new came out. Melody of Memory I had already played through during, uh, like before I had even started streaming. That was like last like October. It was just on like PC. And I'm like I was like, you know what? I was dealing with like all the card stuff and I'm like, eh, 
could stream through a KH playthrough. I'd rather try to keep it like somewhere there. But yeah, I will stream through uh, the um, through Skyward Sword. There, it's a remake, but sure. But yeah, nah, Vonda Boris, man. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, this is, this is, it's always like mobile shit, like like Union Cross and all that stuff like that. It's not, it's not really stuff worth streaming. Obviously, if when any new news comes out, I'll be interested. So that is, so yeah, just talking more about the, about Modern Horizons. So yeah, this is Vonda Boris for sure. But, uh, I was like, they actually just printed straight bottle gnomes. Was that a different card? This card's obviously great. I need to see what the full art one looks like. Oh, Caleb D. He must have did that on his stream. That's cool. I'm not going to read this. I even noticed that. They just straight reprinted Bottle Gnomes. Bottle Gnomes is a cool card. I always liked that card. Oh, no. It's a different card. Isn't there one like you sack? Uh, hit up Noah Shoal uh, for bulk. I would recommend if you're on Facebook, look up Noah Shoal. I sell my bulk to him. He has the, he has the best rates by miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. What's the one that's like you sacrifice it to gain three, though? There was some cards you could like sacrifice it. Oh, this card, by the way, is crazy. This card's like actually nuts. Like, in Vintage, if you're playing the Shop's Mirror, you can kill someone with a 1-1. One, one. If you play this, they're dead. Oh, yeah. Now, Modern Horizons 1 was amazing. Modern Horizons 2 is looking even better. Bottle Gnomes is the original one. Oh, okay. Like this. This is amazing. All right, who did this? Anastasia? Yeah. Then she also do the, uh... This Luminous Broodmoth. sediment or whatever yeah yeah no for sure definitely definitely recommend him noah noah noah's a goat noah is an absolute goat all right everyone let's call it here huh this was fun this was a lot of fun so we'll talk more about modern horizons uh i'm gonna get like collector's boxes of modern horizons and we can do breaks uh, N O A H S H O L L. Right. So, um, I'm going to get Modern Horizons collectors. I'm not going to get set boxes. I'm not, unless you guys really want them. Uh, I'm probably not going to, like, make too much on the Modern Horizons like that. We'll just open it and enjoy it. So, whatever I can get it for, like, just, I'll probably just, like, charge, like, a dollar or two more per pack. You know, just, just to make it make sense with the, uh, like, shipping or just, like, like time or whatever. Like, like th that'll give me enough to buy some materials. So I'm not going to go too crazy. Let's find someone to raid. Let's find someone playing Magic to raid, huh? I'll be earlier. I, I always get things earlier, guys. Come on. Wi-Fi. Come on. You need, come on. Who are you talking to? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Clock Clock Party is doing Twilight Princess. I'm going to we're going to raid Clock again, all right? I know we did that last time. Well, let, let's raid Clock one more time. He's playing Twilight Princess. He's playing my favorite Zelda game of all time. So, let's uh let's do it. I'll I'll send it to you in Discord. I'll put it in Discord. Uh no A. All right, everyone. I will catch you on Monday. And of course, in a Discord.